What's up YouTube? So I've hit my six month mark using Unity and over these six months I've had the conversation many times with family, friends, and colleagues on what exactly goes into solo developing a game. So I thought this would be a great topic for a video and I really haven't seen anything quite like this especially from a beginner's perspective. So do keep in mind I am only six months into using Unity and this video will be pretty specific to the technology stack I'm using and the type of game I'm developing. So more seasoned developers and experts may not agree with some of my topics, but this has been my progress and experience so far. I also want to make a note that this is in no way meant to be a tutorial of any kind. It's just a high level overview of what it takes to solo develop a game in Unity. And the game I'm currently making is a 3D sci-fi action RPG with things like level progression, a full inventory system and UI, rarity based loot items with random rolled stats, including things like armor, weapons, perks, and currencies, a full questing system for the main story quest and side quests, multiple scenes, which include world building and level design, custom characters and models, including their animations and rigging, cutscenes and dialogue, enemy AI and projectiles and gunplay, so what does it take? In my experience, it's been these major topics and it's where I've spent most of my time so far. In my guess, in a AAA studio, these might be their own individual roles. And for sure, some of these have similarities and blurred lines, but I think they're big enough on their own to, to warrant their own category. And one last time, do keep in mind, some of these may be specific to the stack and the type of game I'm making. Obviously, if you're making a 2D game, you're probably not gonna be spending a lot of time 3D modeling. This is Unity. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. So first off, and probably the most important, we'll start with Unity. And definitely, in my experience, the vast majority of my time has been spent here. At a very high level, using Unity is basically plugging everything together. Your coding, your models, meshes, textures, animations, sounds, being able to drag and drop objects and items, paint textures and terrains like grass and trees, and control lighting and shadows and post-processing, building them all into a world, into a game. It's an extremely powerful tool and I feel like I've only scratched the surface over six months. And one of the things I was pretty blown away about was how quickly you can jump in and out of game views and how quickly you can get a game up and running and be able to play it. And if you're thinking about starting game development, whether it's with Unity or Unreal or one of the other engines, it's likely where you'll start and spend most of your time in the beginning. It really is the bread and butter, and the majority of these topics tie back into Uni in some form or fashion. So this brings us to coding. And I will mention, this is really the only category that I was an expert in. I have a computer science degree and have been an application programmer for 10 years. So on this topic, since I'm not a beginner, my opinion might be a little bit skewed. But thus far, I feel like the coding portion has been the easiest. The majority of the code I've written has been what I would consider pretty basic. Only more recently, I've started to get into more complex code. And I also know that Unity offers a codeless option, the, the graph or the node, which I can't really speak to. I didn't try out at all. Since I'm a programmer, I decided to go with the programming option and I went with C Sharp, as most of the tutorials and stuff out there seemed like it was C Sharp. But I also believe you can use JavaScript as well. So keep in mind you'll be coding anything from character movement to enemy AI. In my case I have did a lot of weapon coding for the random rolls and random loot. Things like a questing system, saving and loading. Think about all the basic things that go into a game and you'll likely have to do some sort of coding around it. And really every new feature you add is likely going to have some sort of component of coding. All right, so this brings us to 3D modeling. And in my case, I use Blender. And for at least a few couple days, maybe even week or two, I hated 3D modeling. I hated Blender. I actually got into a verbal altercation with my computer over Blender, and I almost gave up on solo game developing. And as you see this terrible, terrible character, this was my first, I dare say, success or completed character that I actually rigged and added animations to and gave me just enough hope to keep pushing on. Because for me, having my own custom characters and models was a make or break. And luckily, I came across some awesome tutorials by Joey 
that really saved me because I'm a very impatient person and I don't want to spend days and days modeling characters and objects. And his method of character modeling really worked for me. But I will say, as you can see from my list here, is modeling takes up a lot of time. I have a ton of models. I have a ton more to make. So if you're gonna do everything yourself, get ready to spend some time 3D modeling. <laughs> So I think this one is pretty self-explanatory, and that's 2D art. And some people may not realize how much 2D art is actually in a 3D game as well. You gotta think about all your textures for your 3D models. All of the different UI components like buttons and panels and whatnot. And then if you're doing a game with any sort of inventory system, you have to think about all the icons for all the different items. And if you're doing a 2D game, you have to imagine that you're gonna have a lot more 2D art. All of your 3D objects that you wanna have a custom texture on have to be what's called UV unwrapped so that the skin on the model can be laid flat and then you can do your artwork that way. Programs like Blender and others do allow you to paint in 3D but this is still a difficult process. So hopping back over to Blender for some animation and rigging. But applying a rig to your models is basically giving them bones and a structure for moving individual components on your model. Think about a humanoid model. If you just want to move an arm or a leg, you'll, you'll target those bones and those joints. And within Blender and probably mo most other modern 3D modeling programs, they have the ability to auto weight a rig to a model. And in my experience, this has been pretty good. It gets you pretty close, but certain things may get weighted a little differently. And by weighted, I mean how much of the model a specific bone targets, right? So you wouldn't want a bone in your foot affecting your hand movement. So after you have a rig all set up and weighted properly, you can move on to animations. And in my experience with humanoid organic animations, it's very difficult to make them look fluid and look, look correct. Like a running and jumping motion, these are very difficult to do, but I strongly suggest at least trying to do them. This is where I learned the most in animation. And if you think about the AAA studios, they're all using the motion capture suits to, to capture this type of motion anyways. So for all us solo developers, luckily there's a website out there, I think owned by Adobe, that has a lot of basic humanoid animations where you can actually upload your character model and it will weight a rig to it and then give you access to all of the animations stored on their site, which is things like running, jumping, aiming, the typical animations you would find in, in most video games but this won't get you all the way there. You'll still have to do some custom animations and likely you'll have to do some sort of multi-aim constraining or inverse kinematics in your game engine. And a good example of a multi-aim constraint would be something like a third person shooter. When you move your crosshair up to or down and it moves the top torso of your player and their, their arms and hands to, to aim their weapon wherever you're pointing, but say it doesn't affect your, your running or your movement motion. For example, take this tank. The turret is moving and tracking the player while the rest of the tank stands still. This can also be seen in the games where NPCs will look at the player and their head will move with the player, but their body stands still. So shaders, particle effects, and materials I'm really kind of gonna dump together. And first off, I just wanna give credit to Gabriel and Brackies Really all the visual effects, shaders, particles I've created has come from their tutorials. And this is probably the area where I'm least experienced in so far. And really I don't consider myself qualified to really talk about shaders and visual effects. But I like to think of shaders as basically just how, how a material is gonna affect an object once it's applied. Affecting things like light, transparency, shadows, and color. And with shaders, you can create some pretty cool effects like a dissolving effect, a force field effect, a holograms, things like that. So in Unity, I think of materials as something like an art medium. You could create different materials based off different shaders. So if you were creating some sort of artwork and you wanted to use paints or colored pencils together, the same thing goes for Unity and creating materials. You might want to make some materials very opaque or some very metallic or shiny 
and really that's just going to depend on the shader and the, the options you select and then you use these materials to paint your objects or if you have objects that have a specific texture or image you'll want to capture you would apply your image to the material and unity has a pretty good built-in particle system um, and a visual effects graph and similar to shaders i'm not going to speak much on this because i'm still pretty inexperienced here but if you think about any sort of particle effects you want to create you're going to be spending some time here creating projectiles things like fire smoke any sort of explosions all right on to ui and if you've played any video game ever you've dealt with user interfaces before and this is just the menus inventories and window panes you use to navigate the game's options and menus and with unity it has a 2d mode if you're making a 2d game you'll probably be a lot more familiar with this but for ui you'll be in 2d mode and building out a ui will incorporate some of the other skill sets you've acquired like coding your 2d art and really tying all of those together to, to create a good ui in one area of focus here i haven't spent a whole lot of time on is using a controller in the ui um, and really navigating from area to area to button to button with joysticks and i found myself a little bit surprised with how much coding i've had to put behind a, a ui for an RPG style game with items and armor and loot. Creating a well-designed UI will definitely take some practice. So this brings us to last, and but definitely not least on our list, and that's game design. Ultimately, if you don't create or design a fun, compelling, or exciting game, it's gonna be hard to get people to play your game. So really when we think about game design, it really incorporates everything about the game Imagining things like the story, the plots, characters, visual design, layouts of levels and maps, and really creates the flow and aesthetic of the game. It really takes a creative mind, in my opinion, to make a strong game. In helping with game design, you could use different tools like flow charts, storyboarding, and in my case, I carry around a notebook and every time I come up with an idea, I write it down, or draw a concept art of whatever it is I thought of. And for me at least, any time I get any free moments of thought, I spend it thinking about things like the story, any features I could add, stuff I could do to make my game better. So although there's no specific skill set to learn, and by that I mean any sort of program or tools, you'll likely be spending a lot of time on game design. So with that, I don't want to drag this out any longer, but hopefully I gave you at least a decent idea of what all goes into making a game with Unity. Please take a moment to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I should be putting out my second devlog in a couple weeks for my game. And like always, thanks for watching.